Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to my kitchen. Today's topic, we're gonna to be talking about cheat meals, free meals, matching your macros, flexible dieting. Uh, there's a lot of things that we could call it in the off season, but uh, what I'll get, give you an approach that can get you out of a strict routine and get you to eat some foods that you like, but maybe not get you off plan. So we can uh, break down these different classes in the off season of, of cheat meals, something that's completely untracked, or a meal that's matching within your macronutrients. So you have a, a meal that's not on your strict diet plan, but maybe we can make it to where it has the same carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. I don't like the term cheat meal. Um, I think there's times in the off season where you should definitely just not worry about tracking food and just have a meal, but don't call it a cheat meal. I think that gives a negative connotation like you're, you're failing, uh, you're going off plan, um, if, if it's a meal that you plan for, you're technically not going off plan. So usually I, with my clients, I just call them, you know, have a free meal, something that you want. If it's with the family, enjoy it. This eventually comes down to, to your progress. So some people could have more untracked meals than others. Uh, but in the off season, we don't always want to have such a, a plan that has no variety in it. A good diet should have variety. And the off season is a great time when we can definitely add in meals that we haven't had all, all, all year long. And I think you can do that with still just matching your macros and with a little bit of creativity, come up with some good food options. So for me, one of them that I love is sushi. And I, I can't do it all the time on prep, but it is something I could do every week in the off season. And it would be completely within my plan, within my macronutrients. Uh, I also like um, pad thai. I like uh, spaghetti. So I'll do like spaghetti squash if it's like a lower carb day. Um, uh, you could get really creative. I've done cauliflower pizza. We've, we've, uh, my wife and I, we've done lasagna before and all had that macro and macros. And you can even move your macronutrients around a little bit if you need to. You're like, pull a little extra carbs from a meal. Um, even if there is some, some variation within that, like if you're in the off season, your calories are high enough. Like if you're eating 500 grams of carbs a day, if you're having an extra five grams of carbs at one meal, uh, that 1% difference it's not gonna impact your results. So this is a time when you can have you know, a, a little bit of uh, leeway in the macro numbers that you're hitting for your day, for your whole week. So, sushi. Let's get into it. I'm gonna show you how to make some sushi rolls and the things that you need. First off would be some sushi nori, nori paper, just seaweed paper. Just a preface to this, I am a sushi newbie completely for, for making rolls. I am not an expert, don't have an expertise in it, so if uh, you're a sushi connoisseur, I am sorry in advance. This is going to be a basic roll, and uh, you might not, maybe I'm breaking the rules by using chicken in my, my roll too, but what, uh, what you'll need, so you'll need your seaweed paper, that'll be the basis of what we're going to roll it with, uh, rice. And I keep it simple, so I just use Thai jasmine rice. I've already already have meal prepped. It's what I would normally eat in a meal anyway. And what we will, will add will be some, you'll need rice vinegar and then some stevia packets. So it's normal sushi rice, and you can use sushi rice. It has a little bit of acidity and sweetness to it. And so you can get that using those and, and not add any extra calories uh, to, to your, your rice. Other things you'll need is whatever you want to put in your roll. You can have a lot of different options here. For veggies, I have some cilantro. I have some sliced cucumber and sliced carrots. Um, also some avocado. So I have 30 grams of avocado already measured out. So this first roll I'm gonna make is gonna be 105 grams of rice, 30 grams of avocado, and three ounces of chicken. So I have some shredded chicken that I normally eat all year round that I would have with this meal anyway. So. What we're looking at total is roughly 40 grams of protein, 60 grams of carbs, and five grams of fat total for the meal. Uh, for each roll, so I only have enough avocado for one, for one roll, so one roll is gonna be five grams of fat, 30 grams of carbs, and you'll have about uh, 21 grams of protein. So very easy to fit this stuff within your macronutrients. So that's what's gonna be going in the roll. Other additions for just Flavoring of what you like, you can have wasabi. Uh, you can also have soy sauce. You, know, you could go low sodium or just go with the regular one if you want. If you're not using a lot, it's no big deal. Uh, also, some sriracha sauce. 
And I actually probably will put some sriracha sauce in the roll. Uh, another thing too, if you want to be true to sushi making and actually use raw fish, which I do, um, you can buy sushi grade fish. I got this one at Whole Foods, just yellow, yellowfin uh, tuna, and it comes already sliced, and it's really easy to lay out. Uh, so that's definitely an option to do. Um, fish for chicken, it's nearly an even exchange. Just consider if you're doing cooked weight versus raw weight uh, fish, that's where it would it would change. So like three ounces of cooked fish, you probably could be doing four ounces of raw fish for the same protein macros. So that's the layout of everything that you're going to need. Let's get to making this roll. So we have our seaweed paper laid out. It's just a perfect square. And what I'm going to do is just take my rice and just scoop it out right in the middle of the paper, just evenly across. So it's just going to be a rectangle of rice spread out. And I am going to touch my food because it's my food. And I've washed my hands before, so no worries there, guys. But you just want to flatten out the rice and, and have it even across so when you do roll this out, you don't have lumps in your sushi roll. Just try to get some close to the edge. It's usually where I have the, the issue with it. And then I just pat it down a little bit to make that roll. Because you know when you normally get a sushi roll, it's usually pretty compact. So once I have my, my rice laid out, now next, there's really no direct you know, instruction of how you want to put this thing together. It's really up to you how much how you like to organize it. Um, next, I will put my, my veggies on so the strips of cucumber. So just lay them across. And for the macros, I'm not counting these veggies, guys. I mean, you're in the off-season. Most of them have plenty of fiber in them, so those calories really aren't contributing. And the extra ones that do, it's, it's just minuscule. So just keep if, – if you're in such a strict regimen that you don't have the macros to spare for vegetables, well, I'm very sorry for you. But uh, you, you could definitely move some macros around as you needed. So we'll add some carrot into this roll. Going to take a little cilantro, and this really gives a really good flavor to your rolls, and just spread that out in it. Take our chicken, which you could do strips of chicken. It's best anything that you're putting in the rolls, cut long and thin, makes it a lot easier on you. But the uh, shredded chicken, it's definitely easier to move around in your roll and spread it out and get that even layer so we don't get chunks of chicken everywhere. This is going to be a thick roll. This is definitely an off-season roll. Usually your normal sushi rolls that you get at a restaurant, because I've gone to restaurants and just kind of eyeballed it, you know, for macros, and usually they use about a cup of rice, which is 45 grams of carbohydrates. And depending on fish, usually you're getting maybe 20 to 30 grams of, uh, of, of protein from your fish, and also for their fat sources, if they're adding avocado in, or they're, you know, you, if you're using like spicy mayo, that's going to be adding fat or adding eel sauce, would be, it has a lot of more sugars and carbohydrates than that. So um, I'm going to save my avocado for, for my next roll. So this is going to be avocado-less. So I'm going to take my sriracha and just squirt a strip down the middle. I'm going to do one back across. And that's the layout for the roll. Now we're just going to roll it up. Wish me luck because this is the challenging part, but you do want a little bit of water. And take some water and just wet both sides of the seaweed paper. And that's going to help it stick. And once you have those sides wet, we're going to take the side closest to you and roll it over. I'm going to fold it over, try to get it tight, and just cup it. And you're going to kind of squeeze it together with your hands as you're rolling to kind of compact it and get that nice tight roll. And just roll all the way across until we're rolled up. We have a little bit coming out the ends, it's all good. Just pack it in. And that is our rolled sushi roll. Now for me, the hardest part is slicing it. A lot of people smash their rolls and they mess up. You need a really, really sharp knife. This is the sharpest knife I have in my kitchen, which is not saying much, but we'll give it a good go. So what I have found is like, 
you need to wet the, the edge of the blade and I, I don't have a great safety instruction for this for you, but every time you wet the blade, um, it'll get a little bit of that rice gooiness off and just makes it a lot easier to, to slice through. Move my food scale out of the way. And I will say, I think it's easier to start at the middle of your roll rather than trying to start at the end and you end up smashing out all the, all the contents. So don't try to press this thing and cut it real hard. Just let the knife do the work and, and take lots of strokes. And you can get a perfectly nice cut roll. Our first sushi piece roll and it's beautiful and I'm so glad it turned out for you on the video because um, these can be tricky. So we'll just continue slicing it through and make as many rolls as that fits within your diet or macros. Um, this isn't a cheat meal. This is completely within the plan for you and it's something where it's normally you can't have it on, on contest prep because you have to be so regimented and consistent with food intake. But in the off season, it's the time to have, be flexible, have good variety in your diet, enjoy your food to where you can keep better adherence. And also, even budget wise, you know, you can do this at home and, and save some money and not always have me going out to eat. I do encourage you to go out to eat in the off season though because you might not be able to do it on prep. Besides, it's another way It's also have more things to do food-wise with your, your loved one, your spouse, because in prep, you're not taking them out, <laughs> you're not as social, but you can find ways to, to make food fun and do something together at home. So anyway, guys, hope you enjoy it, give it a try. Look down in the description, have the recipe there for you. Please let me know any questions. You can critique my poor sushi making as much as you want, and I uh, look, look forward to, to helping you guys in, in the future with, with more recipes. The most important part is now eating your sushi. All my sushi rolls plated out beautifully. 60 grams of carbs, five grams of fat, 40 grams of protein. Chopsticks are essential, not really, but take some sushi, take some sriracha, some wasabi, this is spicy. Awesome. Enjoy guys.